Our journey starts with one of the most brilliant ideas ever thought up. It came from the mind of Albert Einstein. He imagined that space and time are not separate things. Instead, they're woven together into a single four-dimensional fabric, space-time. This cosmic tapestry isn't just a passive stage for the universe's events. It's an active participant. It can bend, it can warp, and it can ripple. This bending, this curving of space-time, is what we experience as gravity. It's a game-changing thought that replaced the old idea of gravity as a mysterious force pulling objects together from a distance. Einstein's famous equation, E equals mc squared, tells us something really deep about the universe. It says that mass and energy are two sides of the same coin. They are basically interchangeable. This means that anything with mass also has a huge amount of energy stored inside it. But the connection to gravity doesn't stop there. It's not just mass that tells space-time how to curve. It's energy and momentum in all their forms. A bunch of energy, just like a bunch of mass, can create a gravitational field by warping the space-time around it. This is the very core of general relativity. Imagine placing a heavy bowling ball on a stretched rubber sheet. The ball makes a dip, a curve in the sheet. Now if you roll a small marble nearby, it won't travel in a straight line. It will follow the curve made by the bowling ball. That's a simple picture of how gravity works. Planets orbit the Sun not because of some magical pull, but because they are following the straightest path possible through the curved space-time created by the Sun's huge mass and energy. The more massive the object, the deeper the gravitational well it creates. So the rules of the cosmic dance are set by how mass and energy are spread out. Every star, every planet, and every galaxy leaves its mark on the fabric of space-time, telling it how to curve. And in return, that curved space-time dictates how everything else moves. This elegant back-and-forth rules the biggest cosmic events, from the graceful orbits of moons to the dramatic crash of black holes, which send out gravitational waves, ripples in space-time itself, traveling across the universe. This is the universe as Einstein showed it to us, a dynamic and connected cosmos. What if there's another piece to this cosmic puzzle? What if temperature, the measure of heat energy, plays a more direct role in shaping gravity than we currently think. This is where a new idea, the Thermal Gravitational Expansion Theory, or TTG, comes in. This theory doesn't try to replace Einstein's masterpiece. Instead, it suggests something new to add to it. TTG suggests that an object's heat energy, how hot it is, directly adds to its gravitational pull by causing a kind of expansion or change in the space-time itself. It's a fascinating and new idea. The main idea of TTG is pretty easy to understand. Think about what happens when you heat something up. Its atoms and molecules move around more. They move faster and push further apart. The object gets bigger. The TTG model guesses that something similar happens to the fabric of space-time. A hot object, full of heat energy, could make the space-time it's in expand or become less dense in a gravitational way. This would create a slightly different gravitational signature compared to an identical object that is cold and compact. According to this theory, an object's total gravitational field would be a mix of two things. First, there's the standard gravity from its mass, perfectly explained by general relativity. But second, there's a new part, a contribution from its heat energy state. TTG suggests that we need to add a new term to Einstein's field equations. This term would specifically account for an object's temperature change. The equation might look like g mu nu plus t mu nu temp equals 8 pi g over c to the fourth power t mu nu, where the new term changes the gravitational field based on heat. Basically, TTG reimagines the energy momentum tensor, the part of Einstein's equations that describes where gravity comes from. In the standard model, this tensor includes things like energy mass, pressure, and momentum. The TTG model suggests that we should clearly add a term for heat energy density. A hot expanded mass would have a lower density, but a higher heat energy footprint. This small change could mean its gravitational pull might be slightly weaker, or spread out over a larger area than its cold twin, creating a testable prediction for a new kind of physics. How could we test such a mind-blowing idea? Science moves forward not just through big theories, but through careful experiments that put those theories to the test. To check the claims of the thermo-gravitational expansion theory, we can set up a thought experiment, one that might someday be done in a lab. Imagine we have two perfectly identical spheres. 
They're made of the same stuff and have exactly the same weight. They are perfect twins in every way but one. We heat one sphere to a very high temperature while keeping the other super cold. Now, we put these two spheres in a controlled space away from other gravity influences. According to old physics and standard general relativity, their gravity fields should be exactly the same. After all, their mass is the same. Gravity, as we currently understand it, doesn't care if that mass is hot or cold. Any tiny change in gravity due to heat energy from E equals mc squared would be too small to measure with today's tools. But the TTG model predicts something completely different, something we might be able to find. The theory says that the hot sphere, being spread out by heat and having more heat energy, will make a slightly different gravity field. Its gravity pull might be a little weaker or have a different shape compared to its cold twin. We could test this by putting a very sensitive gravity sensor, maybe a torsion balance or an atomic interferometer, near each sphere. We would carefully measure the gravity pull of the cold sphere, and then do the same measurement for the hot sphere. Any consistent and repeatable difference between the two measurements would be amazing proof. If the experiment showed a difference, how would it compare to what we currently know? It would directly challenge the idea that mass is the only important source of gravity in normal situations. It could also give us a new way to look at cosmic mysteries. For example, astronomers see that galaxies spin faster than they should, based on the visible matter we see. To explain this, we came up with the idea of dark matter, an invisible substance that gives extra gravity. But what if some of this difference is due to heat effects? Maybe huge clouds of hot gas in and around galaxies have a different gravity influence than we calculate, slightly changing how galaxies spin. The implications of a confirmed link between temperature and gravity would be nothing short of revolutionary. It would force us to view the universe through a new lens. Phenomena we currently attribute to other causes might suddenly have a new, or at least partial, explanation. Take dark matter, for example. For decades, we've searched for the elusive particles that are supposed to make up this invisible cosmic glue. What if the TTG model is correct? The missing gravity might not come from a new exotic particle, but from the thermal properties of ordinary matter we already know about. This new theory could also reshape our understanding of cosmology and the evolution of the universe. The early universe was an incredibly hot, dense plasma. If thermal energy directly influences the curvature of space-time, then the gravitational dynamics during this primordial era might have been very different from what our current models predict. It could affect our calculations for the cosmic expansion rate, the formation of the first galaxies, and the distribution of the cosmic microwave background radiation. Every corner of cosmology would need to be re-examined with this new physical principle in mind, potentially solving long-standing enigmas. Of course, we're at the very beginning of this line of inquiry. The thermogravitational expansion theory is, for now, a speculative idea. The next steps are clear. First, the theoretical framework needs to be rigorously developed with mathematics, making sure it's consistent with all the established successes of general relativity. We need precise equations that make clear, testable predictions. Without a solid mathematical foundation, the theory remains just a story. This is the hard work that turns a fascinating what-if into a testable scientific hypothesis. The final judge, as always, will be observation and experiment. The proposed experiment with the hot and cold spheres is just one possibility. Perhaps we could look for signatures of this effect on an astronomical scale, closely studying the orbits of objects around stars with different temperatures, but similar masses, like a hot blue giant versus a cooler red giant. Or we could look for subtle anomalies in the paths of spacecraft flying near hot celestial bodies like Jupiter. Whether TTG proves to be a dead end or a gateway to new physics, its exploration reminds us of the most vital aspect of science. Always question, always wonder, and never stop exploring the cosmos.